The 2022 season is over. It is time to grade the rookie class from 2022 after the season. Let's see how they did. Hey, what's going on? I am Matt O'Leary back with another video. And today I'm going through the Jets rookie class and seeing how they performed in the 2022 season. Spoiler alert, very good. <laughs> Most of them performed very, very good. Before we get started today, I just want to mention where you can follow me on social media at Matt O'Leary and why. Also, if you haven't already, please make sure to check out the Just Jets podcast. New episodes drop every single Wednesday. You can call in, leave me your questions, and I will get to them on the show. So it's no secret the Jets had very high expectations for the 2022 season for their rookie class. And I think even they exceeded their high expectations. They were a very hyped up draft class because they traded up. They had three first round picks. They grabbed Brees Hall in the second round, the best running back in the class. They got Jeremy Ruckert and Michael Clemens later on and Max Mitchell. And pretty much everyone was very, very involved in in some capacity with this New York Jets team in 2022. So we're going to go through, we're going to give each one a grade. Uh, and yeah, we'll start off with the top, work our way down to the bottom. Sauce Gardner, pick one, or round one, pick four, technically. But they're for the Jets' first pick, how is it anything but an A+. plus? He was absolutely everything you would want and more as a rookie. Stud, top five corner in the league right now. That's how good he was. He's PFF's number one graded corner, if that's something you put any stock into. He allowed a 45.2 reception percentage, 344 yards, and one touchdown on the season. That one touchdown on the season came back in week two. It was borderline. You could have almost put it on LaMarcus Joyner. It was the Mari Cooper one all the way back against the Browns. That's how good he was this year for the New York Jets. Uh, just absolutely unbelievable. Two interceptions, 14 pass breakups, a 52.5 passer rating allowed. Again, the guy is just an absolute star in the making. He should be Defensive Rookie of the Year. It'd be criminal if Woolen or Hutchinson win the award over him. He was just a dominant player. And when Sauce Gardner was coming out of the draft, or come, yeah, coming out of college, going into the NFL draft, he was my number one corner. I thought he would be a very, very good player in this league. And when the Jets drafted him and they were still able to get the wide receiver in the edge, I was very happy with that. But I didn't think he would be this good right away. I think even the people who were the highest on Sauce Gardner didn't expect this right away. It's rare that you become a, a, a legitimate elite player in your first year in the NFL at one of the harder positions to translate to the next level. Impressive, impressive stuff. Garrett Wilson was the second rookie taken by the New York Jets. And he also gets an A-plus from me. How could you ask for anything else out of Garrett Wilson? 83 catches, 1,100 yards, well, 1,103 to be technical, and four touchdowns. Both of, uh, well, he had four touchdowns coming in two games, which I guess is slightly negative. But just think of what he could have done with, like, average quarterback play or okay quarterback play. They got probably the worst quarterback play throughout the entire year, and he still put up stellar numbers. He set the record for Jets wide receiver, rookie wide receivers. Uh, he smashed Keyshawn Johnson's record. He was the first Jets receiver to go over a 1,000 um, yards in a season since Brandon Marshall and Eric Decker did it back in 2015. He is a special, special, special player worth the pick at pick 10 and is blossoming into a legitimate stud and number one wide receiver. Uh, there's question marks on, on the wide receiver room beyond Garrett Wilson. I think that's obviously something that's you know debatable and something we could talk about in the offseason, but Wilson, worth every single penny of that deal, worth the pick at pick 10. Phenomenal, phenomenal player. The last Jet taken in the first round was Jermaine Johnson. Now, he didn't have as big of a role as Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson. He was kind of just a rotational guy in his first year, easing him on. And to be fair, edge rushers usually take a little bit. It's rare to see them come in and be dominant from day one. Now, obviously, he's not going to be in defensive rookie of the year conversations. He, he 
wasn't the best defensive rookie on his own team even, but I thought he was okay. I thought he was pretty solid overall. In 14 games, he had two and a half sacks, three tackles for a loss, five quarterback hits, and a 13.8 win percentage. Uh, He was solid against the run. A big moment that stands out from him was the Josh Allen sack, and I think he deserves a bigger role next year. He's getting a B from me. I thought he was, okay. again, okay, solid. Uh, Was he bad? Absolutely not. I I don't think he was bad by any stretch of the imagination. Would you like to see the sack numbers come up? Yes, with more playing time. I think you absolutely could see that. But really, when you take a look at these numbers, I know they're not going to necessarily jump off the page to you, but it has to do with the number of snaps that he was getting per game. He didn't have that big of a role. Carl Lawson is someone that the Jets could theoretically cut. Maybe they restructure him, but if you cut him, that's obviously freeing up a starting job. I would imagine that Jermaine Johnson, another rookie that we'll talk about in a little bit, and Bryce Huff serve bigger roles on this team next year. And I think he showed you enough to be excited about the direction where he's going. Again, star? No, he wasn't a star in his first year. Solid player? Yes, and there is potential, and we want to see more from him. Brees Hall. Oh, it breaks my heart that the Jets lost Brees Hall. He played seven games for them this year. By the way, he's getting an incomplete grade. It's how could you grade him after really only playing half a season? He would have been on his way to an A, A plus. He was on his way to a rookie of the year award. In seven games, he had 463 yards and four touchdowns rushing. That's a pace of 1,124 yards and 10 rushing touchdowns. Again, the Jets don't have 1,000-yard rushers on their team. Their last one to go over 1,000 yards was Chris Ivory in 2015. Long, 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 long time ago, uh, he he was a stud in the making. It sucks to see that to, it sucked to see him go down. He's gonna work his way back this off season. He expects to be ready for the start of next season. I think it might take him a few weeks to get going, but I fully anticipate him being back and being a really, really damn good running back on this team. Just unbelievable stuff from Brees Hall when he was on the field. This team drastically changed when they lost Brees and Elijah Vera Tucker. To me, that's not up for debate. The quarterback play wasn't good enough. There were other factors that went into the Jets' collapse. But really, what this offense looked like pre brees Hall and Elijah Vera Tucker injury versus after, drastically different. Drastically, drastically different. Jeremy Ruckert was the next pick. He was taken in the third round. And he also gets an incomplete grade from me. To me, he just didn't play enough. I don't know how you could possibly slap a grade on here for him. He had just one catch for eight yards. Now, he did play probably the most in his rookie year in that final week against Miami, and I was glad to see him out there. He's a really, really good blocker. I was saying all year long that this guy's probably the best blocking tight end that the Jets have, and for whatever reason... Couldn't get on the field. He should have a bigger role in 2023. I don't know if Conklin or Uzama are going to be gone because of their contract structure. But to me, he needs to play a bigger role on this team next year. He's too good of a blocker and he's too talented. Uh, And you look at what he did at Ohio State. I think he was an underutilized pass catcher. He has a really nice skill set. And, you know, just they, they need weapons for whoever is at quarterback next year. Tight end room was a little disappointing. Conklin, Uzama, Ruckert on paper, really, really good, but didn't really get a whole lot out of that position. Next up is Max Mitchell, who played, and I don't think he really was expected to play. I'm going to give him a B minus. I think he was okay. 14 pressures in his, what was it, six, seven starts from him was not, is not ideal. Three sacks allowed. He was put in a really tough spot, and the offensive line play in general wasn't good enough, but I think he's someone who can compete for a starting right tackle job. I, if, I were to guess right now with all the other issues you have on the offensive line, I I think more than likely we're going to see a Max Mitchell and um, Mekhi Becton competition at right tackle. And I think Mitchell would have a good chance to win it. And I mean, let's be honest here. Mekhi's missed the last two years. I'm rooting for him. He looked like he was in great shape uh, at locker room cleanout day the other day. But uh, Max Mitchell, B minus, solid this year. Okay at times. Would like to see him get back on the field next year as well. And finally, the last guy in this draft class, Michael Clemens. Michael Clemens, a fan favorite. I'm going to give him a B. He was also solid this year for the New York Jets. Didn't play a ton of games, 16 games, limited role. And when he did play, he had two and a half sacks, four tackles for a loss, six quarterback hits. He was solid against the run. So was uh, Jermaine Johnson. The two of them, I thought, were most impressive against the run as compared to rushing the quarterback. But 
He's someone else who I think should get a bigger role next year. Um, there's To me, there's no reason that Jermaine, uh, Bryce Huff, and Michael Clemens aren't playing more in 2023. I think he showed promise. He has a great motor, obviously a very, very, very tough individual. He's a fan favorite. He's a lot of fun. I think he deserves a B. So overall, really got a lot out of this draft class. Jeremy Ruckert's who you got the least out of. Kind of makes sense with the two guys who are in front of him. Brees Hall also received an incomplete grade just because uh, he didn't end up finishing, but everyone else I thought was was solid. They all contributed and you know were pretty good. Let me know how you would grade out each rookie from this past year. Uh, I, I mean, I guess you could technically throw in guys like uh, Zonovan Knight, who was a was a nice surprise. He didn't play enough for me to earn a grade. So if you want to throw those guys in too, you can do that as well. But thank you so much for tuning into today's video. Once again, I am Matt O'Leary, and I will talk to you next time.